This is Adam Moore. And this is Tom Maloney. Adam and Tom have one thing in common, which is the Mini Electric Cooper created by BMW. The Mini E, as they call it, is just like the Mini Cooper we all know. But instead of using gas, it uses electricity. The car runs thanks to a 572-pound lithium-ion battery pack that is placed in the back of the car. And to charge these batteries, you just have to plug the car into a 240-volt wall box created by BMW. Next step, wait one, two, three hours until the batteries are fully charged. Then you're ready to go for a total range of 120 miles at a maximum speed of 95 miles per hour. Obviously, many questions come to mind. And this is where Tom and Adam come back into the picture. They have identical cars, but in two different settings. Tom lives in the suburbs in Chester, New Jersey, and Adam in the city in Brooklyn, New York. We asked them how the car worked and how satisfied they were of their full electric car. I don't buy gas, I don't burn gas, I don't even know what gas costs anymore. The obvious advantage of a 100% electric car is the fuel cost savings. The Mini E's electricity costs roughly one-third to half the price of gasoline. Still, leasing the car is not free. It costs $850 a month, a lease to which you have to add 120 or so I pay a month for insurance. It's another 225 for the garage. Quick math, I guess that's what, 1200, 1250 a month. Next chapter, the charging. In order to get the car, you had to keep it in a garage, and of course, the charger would need to be there too. Easy for suburban boy Tom, but not as quite for city boy. I worked with the management company, the development company, the garage managers, convincing them that this was a good thing, that they should let me drill into their walls. And after many discussions and a lot of convincing, Adam got his charger. But before going to drive, you have to charge the car for three hours. So what do you do? Every night I come home and it takes about 15 seconds and I plug it in. So there's your answer. You sleep. But with a range limited to 120 miles and no public charging stations, will they have enough juice to drive? How do they do it? Solution one, you plan accordingly. There was one time that Amanda and I were driving to a party on the Upper West Side and I'd forgotten to charge the car. It was clear that by the time we got to somewhere around Chelsea, that we were simply not going to make it home. She made me drive to the subway station that would have been closest to where we were going. Parked near the subway station, took the subway up, went home. And came back the next day. His car had just enough power to make it back home. But that was when Adam was first starting. Now he knows the car's limits. We are headed into the city. I've got to run some errands. If you, even if I had maybe 10% charge, 5% charge, I could run these errands today and not really worry about it. I probably won't even recharge it when I get home. Solution two, a second charger. Tom lives about 49 miles away from his restaurant in Montclair. He has just enough power to go back and forth every day, nothing else. So he installed a second charger, and that has changed a lot for him. Now I use the car um, about 130, 120, 130 miles a day because I run all the restaurants' errands with it to get produce, to go to the bank. I do all that with the Mini E. So range anxiety? Forget about it. So what about the space? Well, one thing, forget the kids. The car's a two-seater, so you can bring a friend or put your shopping in the front. And the trunk, well... There's no back seat because it's taken up by batteries, so all that fits is a couple bags of groceries and maybe my dog. But is it hard to drive the car? It's a go-kart on wheels. They handle very well. When you give it full throttle, the car responds instantaneously. You can use one foot to do your accelerating and your decelerating. The car slows itself down when you ease up on the accelerator. And in other words, it almost feels a little bit like a video game. But without the noise. That's one of the weirdest things is that it's silent. The most difficult part to get used to is knowing when the car is on. It's all visual cues. You know, are the needles on? Are these particular lights on? So all in all, is it worth it? I'm, I'm not really an environmentalist. I didn't get it because I needed another car for transportation. I wanted to be part of the beginning of what I see as the future of the automobile industry. It's a true luxury. It's not a necessity. It's not a question of, do, do I need this in order to function here? No, of course not. Be patient. The Mini E is still very much in its research phase.